want to learn today about the Palmetto Leaf Program at Clemson University, and we are so happy today to have a group that can explain it to us. Kirby Player, you are the um, chairman of this program, and um, we'll come back and learn a lot more about it from you, but I want to introduce the, the um, current and former graduates that you have. Um, Herb Nicholson, um, you're a forester, I believe. Yes, ma'am. And um, tell me where you are and with what company you're associated. I work for a Dom Tar Paper Company in Bennettsville. Okay. And I'm a procurement forester, and I, I buy uh, pulp wood and, and sawmill residual chips from our suppliers in North and South Carolina. Okay, and across both states. Yes, ma'am. All right. And then, um, Keisha, um, you're a Produce Safety Coordinator. Yes, ma'am. And um, what area do you, and what does it, and so tell me, are you visiting farmers and making sure that what comes to our markets um, is, has been handled appropriately? Yeah, so I work for Carolina Farm Stewardship Association, so I actually serve South Carolina, where I live here in Lexington, and North Carolina farmers. So I go out to their farms, review what they're doing for practices, making sure they're doing good food safety practices. I write their food safety plans for their operation, and then I also get them ready for any kind of audits they're getting ready to face as well. Ashley goes, you didn't have to come too far today. I think you're right over in Maysville, and you are from a farming family. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. So I have a whole wholesale container nursery now on our family farm, and I do finished product material in a two quart to a five gallon container size. Um, those five gallons get kind of heavy by the end of the day, don't they? They do get a little heavy. That's why I said I will not go any larger than a five gallon because I have to pick them up. Yes. Um, well now, Kirby, we're going to come back to you and actually learn what the Palmetto Leaf Program is all about. Thank you so much, Amanda, for having us here today. Yes, Palmetto Leaf stands for Leadership for the Environment, Agriculture, and Forestry here in the state of South Carolina. Its goals and purpose is to equip current and future leaders for these vital industries. Understanding that in South Carolina we are a smaller state and that aspect of production agriculture, production forestry is dependent upon high quality natural resources, how we use our soil, how we use our water, as well as understanding our neighbors in industry, um, residential areas. It's the beauty of South Carolina and that cultural richness that comes from our industries that makes South Carolina such a meaningful destination, a beautiful place to live and work. These leaders, as we train them, will be part of ensuring that fabric stays in place in the future. We um, have had two classes already, cohort one and two, and we're working toward building cohort three now for those future leaders. I'm going to come back and get some more information about the program itself, but first let's talk to some of the participants. Okay. Um, so Herb, we're going to start with you. Are you seeing, um, one of the things I imagine that foresters run into and people who are um, growing timber is trying to explain to people that this is a renewable resource. Um, I think there's probably some PR involved in what you do. Absolutely. That's a ongoing battle that foresters face. Um, I feel like as a profession we don't do a great job of explaining what we do and telling the story and um, something we could definitely be better at. One of the things that's really helped me is realizing that others across the ag and natural resources you know, spectrum are facing similar challenges um, to, to what we do in forestry as far as uh, that encroachment between the the land where we produce our products and and the public or the you know the urban sprawl I guess is what you'd say um, that's we all are facing that same problem same issue with land possibly not being in production anymore so okay well thanks and um, we'll come back to you later and then um, Keisha if you're able to help other people understand how carefully people are what is involved. Um, that that probably encourages people to um, purchase lo locally produced food, which yes. I think is critically important. 
Yes, we, we always want to push to shop local and to visit and support your local farmers. Um, they need our support more than ever, especially in these trying times. So we love to make sure that, the, that they don't get lost in the industry and get kind of pushed back as things kind of grow. A lot of our farmers are older, and so it's just teaching them some good food safety practices and helping them break into those new markets that they're looking for. How is meeting people from other aspects of the agricultural industry sometimes helped you in your work? It's helped me um, connect my farmers to other people that they need in the industry and it's helped me understand more about what my fellow colleagues do and kind of tap into that industry. With my work I stay pretty focused and uh -huh. zoned in what I'm doing so it's nice to break away and learn different aspects of agriculture and how I can be a support to them and they can be a support to me. Okay and then Ashley your family you're from a family that did traditionally farm at one point and um, but you are now doing um, you're growing woody, woody ornamentals. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. So my family was in conventional row crop farming for um, four generations. And I went to Clemson, got a degree in horticulture, and then I've been in the horticulture industry in South Carolina for the last 26 years. I came back to our family farm in 2017 and started our my own container production nursery. So how have you found this program useful to you, and what have you really taken out of it? Well, I'll have to reiterate what uh, Keisha and Herb have said. It's given us an opportunity to really understand different sectors of agriculture and how we have common concerns, we have common policy issues that we need to be addressing, and to develop these relationships across the sectors is just a, a huge um, benefit for our leadership potential in the future where all of our industries are going to have to work together to combat um, situations that are on the horizon. Well, there are pressures, yeah, there, there are, are pressures that there are, are coming. Are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think y'all take, tell me a little bit, Herb, about how the program's been organized as you, as you are experiencing it. One of the facets of the program that I've really enjoyed is our, the Amplos Growth Project, which is a uh, uh, it's a 12-month project or a program that we've been through, and it's self-paced, and it's really uh, to, to make us kind of look inside ourselves a little bit, a little introspectively, uh, to see how we could further or you know, better ourselves professionally and, and personally. It was really good. It talked about you know, goal setting, um, uh, even the importance of positive self-talk, oh. um, like you see maybe some athletes do on the field, you know. Mm -hmm. You always thought maybe they were just kind of talking to themselves and didn't really understand why, but they're actually, you know, talking themselves up. Um, and, you know, it, we were able to develop our own vision and mission statement for ourselves. Um, so it does some really neat things that we got to do to kind of, you know, look at ourselves and, and improve. Okay. And then, Keisha, y'all take trips to places that where people are doing things differently from you are. And I don't know, perhaps you organized a trip to show people what, it is you do in your work. Um, has that been an, an, a positive and enriching experience? And what is there anything you remember in particular? It's just kind of like, golly, if, you know, when you, the whole drive home, I just had no idea. Every time we take a trip, I come home like very chatty Kathy and just tell, <laughs> tell my whole family what we've been doing and showing them pictures. Um, one of my favorite things we did was went to Clemson to do the robotic milking machine. Um, that was pretty that's awesome. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yes, that's pretty innovative. And then you get to hang out with a bunch of beautiful cows all day. So that's not a bad day <laughs> by any means. Um, but yes, Kirby has established some beautiful places for us to go to oyster farms in Charleston, um, going to the Chick fil A headquarters in Atlanta, um, even meeting Coach Dabo Sweeney and having him talk to us about leadership and the importance of that from his team and his perspective. So it has just been very impactful to not only get to talk about agriculture and all of these things in the environment, but then actually get to go see what people are doing all over the state. Um, now you have actually completed the program, and I believe y'all continue to get together occasionally, but um, when you think back on what happened and what you learned, um, what, what are the main things that stand out in your mind? Meeting the diverse group that we had where they represented the different sectors of ag and you really got to understand more about the other sectors that I wouldn't have an opportunity to do as well. We tend to just 
focus on our community relationships with those that are in the ag industry. Sure. And this has just given us a great statewide um, network. So I really did enjoy it and I found it to be very invaluable. Kirby, um, as we do know, there are gonna be challenges that we're facing. We have a very aging um, group of actual farmer farmers. Um, so do you think that these people are going to be um, our lobbyist in such a sense, I mean, our environment is under pressures. Tell me how you really feel that they can do best to help preserve this important part of South Carolina's life. Amanda, we are seeking to create advocates out of every Pea Leaf graduate to help them understand what it means to be a servant leader to the industry. Not only do we, by building relationships and networking among the cohorts, we, we expose them to our civic leaders with the hopes and ideas that one day they will pursue such an office to serve. In fact, during our cohorts, we've had several that have been elected to local offices, um, as well as giving them the opportunity to understand what it means to advocate to legislators, to county council, city council, as well as just to their neighbors, that they will be a positive representative for our industries that, as was stated a little earlier, sometimes misunderstood because we believe that each P Leaf graduate has the opportunity to lead. And our definition for leadership within the program comes from Dr. John Maxwell. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So it's our desire that P Leaf graduates will positively influence and be advocates for our vital life-sustaining industries that are represented in P-LEAF. Kirby, I am sure that you are um, always interested in finding new people who would be good. I think you even like for people to perhaps refer people who they think might be a good member of your class. Um, and so can people talk to you about this if they're interested? Yes, Amanda, we are always looking for current and aspiring leaders. Um, there's 28 years old and above are available for the program and please reach out to me. It may be they that are interested or someone they know, um, a neighbor, a child, a colleague. Um, please reach out and we would love to share more details with them about Palmetto leadership for the environment, agriculture, and forestry. Well, um, if this group is an example of the quality people and, um, and their ability to speak and articulate the importance of this, I think it sounds like y'all are doing a great job. I want to thank you so much. Well, we thank you and thank you for making it grow to share about our program.